Hey, welcome to today's broadcast. I hope you're doing great. Um, carry with our journey in pursuit of the wisdom of God. So yesterday we finished off by talking about how um, Jesus is the word of God and the wisdom of God and how that when you invite him into your life and embrace him and make him the Lord of your life, you have access to the wisdom of God. Can you imagine access to the wisdom by which this whole creation came into being? Access to the wisdom by which this whole creation is held and put together. Because the Bible says that it is by the word of his command that he upholds all things. So just imagine that you have access to that kind of wisdom in your uh, earthly journey. And this is so crucial and so important because especially in the times that we're, we're in, uh, we need the wisdom of God to be able to negotiate all these different tricky things that happen in the world. Um, it's so important. It is very important because one, just one little mistake I mean, I learned this lesson when I was in the business, actively in the business world, you know, and uh, just one little tiny emotional decision that is not right can lead you to, to you know, lose lots of money and it can set you back years, you know, just one single mistake. And then imagine if you, you continuously walking in the wisdom of God. Just imagine how blissful that would be. Okay, you can expect to take the right decision because God sees everything. He knows what we don't know. He sees everything in context. He knows yesterday, he knows today, he knows tomorrow. So he can help us to make the right decision now that would affect us in, the, in, in decades to come. If guitarists, <laughs> if we are still around, praise God. At the rate I think things are going, well, we never know. Anyway, praise the Lord. So today, we're going to talk about a major gateway to the wisdom of God, and that is prayer. Okay, so you've embraced Jesus, the Word of God, the wisdom of God. He is the Lord of your life. And uh, how do we build on that? You have access right to that wisdom or do you know that it's not everybody that has access that takes advantage of that access yes you and i can have access to the wisdom of god but unless we actually press into it and take advantage of it and use it and apply it you know we can still be hanging around <laughs> you know just like ordinary people making the same mistakes you know doing the wrong things so let's look at this. So prayer on the basic level is communing with God. Now I'm talking about the God of heaven, okay? The creator of heavens and of the earth. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? The one whose wisdom we're pressing into, okay? Now, prayer is communing with God. Uh, on, that is the, on the basic level. It is when you take time to um, spend time with God, you know, uh, at different positions, you know. Sometimes you pray on the way. Sometimes you pray while in your car. Sometimes you pray, you take time out, you get on your knees, you know, to pray. Sometimes you're standing and walking around. <laughs> Maybe you don't want to fall asleep. <laughs> or the situation demands that you are up and doing and so on. Sometimes people prepare to pray while on a walk you know so the position that you take really doesn't make much difference the important thing is that you're spending time with god then also you know the different modes of praying some prefer to pray quietly quietly or silently in their hearts some mutter it you know because i mean the bible says that uh, God, if God is on the inside of us, we don't really need to shout for him to hear because he even hears what we're thinking about. Yes, that's correct. 
even before you make you take that thought god knows it all right and then there are those who prefer to shout you know and, I, and i'm sure that god is not uh, he doesn't have a nervous problem in fact the bible records that the shouts in heaven shouts of praise in heaven so there's room for every mode of praying remember the important thing is that you're communing with god all right so and there are different types of prayers as well okay uh, i can't go into all that here there's prayer of um, repentance there's prayer of uh, uh, um, agreement whereby you agree with another believer you know there's prayer of commissioning there's prayer of you know surrender you know there are different kinds of prayer and there's also warfare praying you know there's prayer of faith i mean all prayers have to be prayed in faith anyway <laughs> there's prayer of petition you know and all so many different types of praying but at the basis of everything is the fact that you're taking time out to commune with god and in during that communication there may be actions that will require you to release words <laughs> In, to go in another direction amen <laughs> hallelujah so the bottom line is still the fact that you're communing with god and also there are different uh, aspects to our praying for instance you know when you come into a place of prayer for instance like um, if you're going to see the queen you don't just budge in and just you know throw the door open and say hey queen da, da, da. no you don't do that <laughs> there's protocol you know this protocol you know we we come boldly the bible says but we come with great honor and respect remember you know the fear of the lord is beginning of wisdom wisdom demands that you show respect when you come into the presence of the lord when you the way you speak to god the way you honor him you know it shows in every area of your life including your prayer life right so we don't just budge in and then, you know, in, in, in the Psalms talks about how I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Even though that gives an impression that, oh, you, are, you have so many different places to get to before you access the presence of God, which is very different from where we're at now because the veil has been torn and the presence of God has moved into our lives. That's why the Bible says that, you know, when you ask this into your heart, he says that um, the kingdom of God is within you. So God indwells us. But at the same time, we still show honor and respect when we turn to him in prayer, you know, and things like that. Because that's just a protocol. So during the process, a, a time of prayer, maybe a time of praise and worship. I mean, somebody does something good to you. I mean, I'm such a grateful person. I don't know. Maybe that's being proud. But I never forget about one good deed that somebody does to me. I will never forget it. No matter how small, no matter how little, I would always be grateful. Because they didn't have to. They might have chosen to be mean or not help out, although God would have raised up somebody else. But they chose to be used for that. So for that, I will always be grateful. In the same way, when we look at all the good things that God has done for us, we cannot but be grateful. Okay? Even if all we do all day long is just thanking him and praising him and worshiping him, he's worthy of it all. He's worthy of it all. So, so this time of praise, thanksgiving, and we come into his presence when we approach him, it doesn't have to be protracted like for hours or whatever. There's time for that. Maybe that's all you just want to do, just worship him. But there are times for just thanking him, you know, just showing your gratitude, you know, and then you press on to other aspects. You know, one of the things that um, the, the, the prayer um, um, model that I see in the scriptures is that of the Lord's, what we call the Lord's Prayer. You know, where Jesus taught the disciples, and of course, that's teaching us, isn't it? That when we come to the presence of the Lord, you know, we come with worship. It says, our Father who art in heaven. We recognize that he's the King of heaven. He's also our King, he's our Father. He indwells us. But the primary place where he dwells is heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. We have a relationship with him. The Bible says as many as believe, as many as receive him, Jesus, he gives us the power, the right to become children of the Most High God. So he becomes our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We reverence you. We worship you. We magnify you. 
okay your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven lord we want your purpose to be established we want your will to be done i mean can you see the 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 sort of like the protocol there that the lord showed us taught us in that prayer okay so we worship him we enter his courts praising and worshiping him and then we agree we line up we we agree with his purpose and his plan his purpose and his plan is that his kingdom would come on the face of this earth that is we don't face of, of earth exactly as it is heaven okay so that is his plan so we surrender our will to that plan we yield to that plan as we enter his courts you know with prayer as we come into his presence praying okay your own call will be done on earth as it is in heaven then we ask what we need give us this day our daily bread that can cover anything and everything that we need do you need wisdom you can ask for wisdom do you need counsel you can ask for counsel do you need material things you can ask for all those in that time frame yep. uh, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses even as we forgive those who have trespassed against us that is a powerful principle in the kingdom of god you see god has forgiven us much more than we can ever imagine all right and he says that if we don't forgive other people we may not be able to receive that forgiveness that's available to us do you understand so it's a principle of the kingdom of god we forgive not because people are repentant or whatever they may still be arrogant they may still be wicked but you just forgive them for the sake of being aligned with the will of god that nothing will block your own blessing okay so like when we're going in that prayer it says uh, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us who have sinned against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil well how, how we so need deliverance from evil remember in psalm 91 it says he would deliver us from evil so we put it into our praying as well deliver us from evil lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil then we end it up with praise and worship again for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen which means i agree <laughs> hallelujah so we're talking about prayer being a gateway into the wisdom of God. So like I said, the bottom line is communing with God is what praying is about. And when we commune with God, okay, it's not just us speaking. We are in a communication with somebody, we're communing with somebody. If it's just you speaking, there are people that are, that are so, um, they don't learn to listen. I once did a course on coaching. And one of the things that we had to learn to do was to learn to listen. Because the more intent you are at listening, the more the information you can gather from what the other person is saying. You can listen, and as you're listening, you are even taking in their body language, you're, you know, so many different you're picking up so many different, you know, uh, things in their communication, you know, like uh, different um, things that may be hindering them and so on. When you listen intently. So that is one thing that we need to do. When we're praying, we're not just talking to God, okay? For instance, bringing his word to him, you know, asking him, but we're also listening for his instruction. Can you see? It's a two-way thing. We're listening for his instruction, you know, talking, listening. In fact, during my training, <laughs> we're told to listen 70% of the time and only do 30% of the talking. Maybe you should try that. <laughs> For some of us, we're so quick to talk. It's like your brain is going all the time. You just want to talk and talk back. So you're not listening and even giving yourself time to process the information that the other person is giving to you. And this comes to play in our prayer life, okay, in our walk with the Lord. When we don't listen, we don't take in the wisdom of God. We're not getting the word of God. We're not, we're not able to give ourselves time to absorb what God is trying to say to us. And this is very important okay so prayer is communion with god now this is so important because it gives us access to the heart of god it gives us access to the wisdom of god okay it gives us access to the heart of god access to the wisdom of god you know and uh, personally I'm, I'm learning to do more of listening i'm trying to apply that principle of 70 30 whereby 
and listen more, you know, than I'm talking. I once had a, a dream at a time, you know, a difficult time in my life where I was just praying and praying and praying and seeking God. It was like, if God doesn't show up, that's it. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> but um, I had this dream and in this dream, um, it was like I saw the Lord was holding my hand, not not me as a person. It was a little girl, you know, we're both clothed in this white raiment and so on. But this little girl was just talking, 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 talking. I mean, I immediately I knew that was me. <laughs> the girl was just talking, 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 not even listening to what the Lord was saying. But thank God, He just ignored her and we just just grabbed the hold of the hand and was just taking her through where she needed to go through. So, learn that, 7 to 30. <laughs> Talk less, listen more, okay? So that we can be able to access the heart and the wisdom of God. The more we listen, okay, yes, we've got the word of God, but we're reading the word of God as well. As we're reading, we're listening. It's God speaking to us, and he may quicken certain aspects to us. He may explain certain things to us. So really, this is so crucial. You know, in accessing the wisdom of God. Now, um, in Psalm 8, verse 34, the Bible, you know, yesterday we talked about how wisdom, that person uh, called wisdom in the scriptures, was talking about uh, herself, you know, explaining who she is, how that she doesn't work, work alone, how that she has companions of counsel, of discernment, and all these things working together. And, and, you know, discretion, justice, you know. In verse 34, it talks about how blessed are those who come and listen and watch daily at the gates of wisdom. So when we make it a regular thing, you know, that we don't just uh, turn to God today and then <laughs> forget about him for the next one month until it's another situation that comes up. No. We watch daily. In fact, now we have no excuse because, I mean, God is within us. We are in him. So it's a 24-7 thing. We can tune in to God and listen to what he's saying. Send off a quick prayer every now and then. I do that a lot. <laughs> you know, God, I, if it's just God, I need your help here. You'd be amazed how quickly <laughs> that help would come. Okay, so um, we do it on a regular basis, on a consistent basis. You know, that's how we can continually access the wisdom of God, you know, and um, in uh, James chapter 4 verse 8, the Bible says that when we draw near unto God, he will draw near unto us. So you decide how closely you want to walk with God. The choice is yours. If you and I decide that we want to walk closely with God, then we draw near unto him. We acknowledge him more and more. We take time to spend with him. We, we During our time, during our day, even when we're work, walking, I mean, as in W-O-R-K-I-N-G, <laughs> working every now and then, you know, your, your mind can switch to God or maybe you need help in a particular aspect. He can help you and remind you of things. God is intricately involved. I remember, you know, uh, as a pharmacist, there are times when I just, you know, all of a sudden just break out in speaking an unknown tongue. And then occasionally I remember that I, I passed a particular prescription and then the, the thing would just come to my mind to recall that prescription. So I'll recall it and check it again. Not all the time, but oftentimes I found out that I've passed a mistake. Even if a little mistake, you know, you know, you're dealing with drugs and people's lives is very important. So I, I, I discovered I've made a mistake, you know, and the Holy Spirit was there, right there with me and helped me say, no, pick that back up. There's a mistake there. You know, things like that. So God can be intricately involved in our life, in our professions. In our... God is not the God of just our, a, a compartment of our life. It's all of our lives. When you're making the Lord of your life, he's involved in every area. And he wants you to succeed in every area. Okay. So when we draw near unto him, he will draw near unto us. Hallelujah. Now, when we keep company with God, what it says in proverbs 13 verse 20 when you hang out <laughs> that's a modern way of saying it <laughs> when you hang out with god you can be sure that you become wise the bible says in proverbs 13 20 that he 
who walks, W-A-L-K-S, with the wise will become wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. So if you take time to hang out with God, to walk with God, the Bible says that you will become wise. It is automatic you will become wise because you'll be feeding on the wisdom of God helping you in every area of your life. People will be wondering, oh, how do you end up making just the right decisions and so on and so forth? I mean, in, in business life, I've made some real blunders before that it comes to a point and I said, Lord, I don't want to make any mistakes anymore. I really want your counsel. I really need your guidance. I need your wisdom. And things have gotten better. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No, because you see, the Bible talks on the opposite side in first corinthians 15 33 just like it says in that proverbs 13 20 the second part that a companion of fools will be destroyed in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 it talks about how we should not be deceived that evil communication corrupts good manners but the opposite is true when you keep company with good people or when you keep company with god the father of wisdom then you will become wise this is automatic right very important and um this brings me to an area that is very very close to my heart and that is being led by god prayer is a gateway to access the wisdom of god and to be led by him to be led by him you know um in psalm 32 verse 8 i've made reference to a time in my life where i really pressed into god that god i really want to be led by you and God gave me the reveal this particular verse in the scriptures today. That's Psalm 32 and verse 8. And he said, I will surely lead you. I will surely counsel you. But you should not be like the horse or the mule that have to be bridled or bridled for them to obey. Don't be, don't be stubborn. So God's promise is certain that he will surely lead us. He will surely guide us. I don't know about you, but I, I need to be led. You know, I need to be led by God, the Father of wisdom, to lead me, to guide me, so that I will not, you know, um, I will avoid snares and pitfalls. You know, I'll be able to navigate life. You know, I'll make the right, wise decisions in life. You know, I will end up increasing and not losing in any area of my life. So it says, I will surely lead you or guide you. That is so very important then in psalm 23 verses 2 and 3 i mean that's another favorite psalm of mine in fact you know it was like my from when i was a little girl in primary school the lord is my shepherd i shall not want it was like a tagline for my life basically i used to write it on my rulers you know like wooden rulers i used to have in primary school those of you in school in africa you have no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> You should have these wooden rulers that you know you can write your name in the middle so whenever that ruler travels and then he'll come back to you so i used to write the lord is my shepherd uh i shall not want and then put my name under it you know and i once had a ruler like that and it traveled all through my primary school and then came back even though it came back battered and broken on the edges i still got it back so the lord has been the sh my shepherd now listen to what he says there in verse two he says he leads me, talking about the Lord who's my shepherd. He says, he leads me beside quiet waters and he restores my soul. You know, in a time of uncertainty like this in the whole world, I mean, nobody knows when all these lockdowns are going to be lifted, the economic effect, so many different things, social effects. I mean, for certain, it's sure that things will not go back to the way they were before the lockdowns and the, before the pandemic, you know. So we need the wisdom of God to be able to, uh, 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 it says, the leading of God, sorry, beside quiet waters to restore our soul. Our souls need restoration. You know, our minds, our wills and our emotions, fear, anxiety, worry, you know, it's attacking so many people. And that is, lowering their immunity did you get me fear the bible says has torment you know fear incapacitates so the bible says that my shepherd leads me beside still waters he quietens my heart 
through his word but says the word of god you know it's like water right it says he leads me beside quiet waters and he restores my soul we need restoration of our soul these times so we need to take time out to really be led by god take time out in prayer to receive the wisdom of god to receive before you make any decision major decisions you know take time out don't be in a hurry don't be in a rush okay and the more we do that the quicker it is for us to know the heart of god for us to know the wisdom of god all right and then he restores my soul he says he leads me in paths of righteousness now this is important because we know right um wisdom you know comes with righteousness so when you're operating the wisdom of god you are in the path of righteousness so prayer keeps you in that path of righteousness that's so important mm -hmm. Keeps you in the path of righteousness, and that is really absolutely important in this time that we are in. We need the wisdom of God, and prayer is one of the massive gateways to access the wisdom of God. So that's all I've got to share with you today, and I just pray that this word of God, the Bible says the entrance of his word brings light. I pray that this word has brought light. I pray that as many people as will watch it, will be encouraged, will be enlightened, will be quickened, you know, in the place of prayer. Prayer is so important. He who walks with the wise will become wise. It's very, very important. Father, I just pray for everyone that's listening or that's watching, everyone that will watch or listen. I pray that God, you will, they will be drawn to you, the fountain of life, the father of wisdom. And in drawing near unto you, you will draw near to you. They will have peace in the place of prayer. They will have wisdom, counsel that will guide them, give them peace, you know, guide them in every area of their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, I pray that Lord, everything that we're engaged in at this point in time, that all would turn out for our good as we spend time with you in the name of Jesus. I pray for those who are hurting at this time. I ask that you visit them, O oh God of all comfort. I pray that God, you will heal the sick, especially those who are tormented by this virus thing. In the name of Jesus, we command the COVID-19 thing to lose its hold upon them in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we ask you to breathe into their lungs and give them life. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. So guys, tomorrow's another day if this has been a blessing then like it and share it click the notification button it's going to be on youtube as well so if you know anybody who's not on facebook send them to youtube our youtube channel is summit as an s-u-m-m-i-t ministries plural international uk don't forget to put the uk <laughs> because all these episodes are there you know, send people there, they can watch it. And when they watch, watch it, they like, they share, they click the um, subscribe button, and also they can click the bell button. So they get notified anytime we post anything new. All right. If anybody during this series of episodes, if you embrace Jesus and make him the Lord of your life and you need help to help you navigate, you know, to find out what's happened so that you can grow in grace. I actually have uh, an audio teaching called Grow in Grace. It's also on our YouTube channel. You know, when you get there, you find it there, Grow in Grace, and you can listen to it, all right? Thank you for joining me. Have a great day, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.